to be seen. We're joined now by health policy expert Betsy McCoy. Betsy, thanks for staying with us here on America's Forum. Well, thank you. And yes, sadly, these numbers are not reliable. We found out on several occasions, this just being the latest one, that the uh, enrollment numbers have been fudged. Uh, some Originally, it didn't it included people who weren't going to pay, uh, people who simply logged on. Now it included people who bought dental insurance, which has nothing to do with the Obamacare plan, and uh, certainly not with solving the problem of the number of uninsured. But let's go to the bigger picture here, because we focused a lot on the lies that President Obama has told about Obamacare. You can keep your plan if you like it. You can keep your doctor. You're going to save $2,500. But what this giant lie machine at the White House has done is, sim is, is more than just lie to us. It's also destroyed our confidence in any of the agencies of government. We see people at the Department of Health and Human Services lying. We see the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, once a respected agency, now it's the Centers for Denial and Confusion. We know that the Congressional Budget Office is now the place you go to get your numbers rigged. What a shame that Americans are watching the federal government become one giant lie machine. And Betsy, just to be clear here, the original estimate was overinflated by 400,000 and you're not you should you should say no one should believe that this was simply an accounting error this is a deliberate Absolutely effort not. by this administration. If it were the first mistake maybe but there's such a long string of these examples of the numbers being corrupted by the federal insiders. But see, House Republicans first spotted the issue. Um, is this going to be something added to the ongoing feud over Obamacare do you think? Well, certainly every time the administration lies, lies to Congress or lies to the American people, it's a serious thing. If lying were impeachable, an impeachable offense, this president would be long gone. And Betsy, you're right. There's, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence here to point to half-truths or lies, if you want to call it that. Um, we don't want to debate that, but what we do want to talk about, though, is, is that the, you have the lawsuit, and you have all these issues that keep coming up, the investigations in different House committees, but at the same time, we have a, a number of different measures passed by the House, not one unifying replacement or one way to really repeal uh, Obamacare or defund it that the entire party seems to get behind. Is any of, this, any of these efforts... I think they've kept their powder dry until the Republicans uh, control both houses of Congress. Virtually all the Republican plans are very, very similar. The Republicans are not going to have a problem passing a series of small measures to help people who are uninsured, to help people who can't currently afford their health insurance. Let but me some, understand. But Betsy, some people would say if they had that document in place already, if they had that document in place, say, before the elections, there would be, a, there'd be 60 Republicans in the Senate something like that, maybe a supermajority, if they had a unifying principle like a health care contract with America before the election, that the Republican Party would still be in even better shape today. Well, that may be, but let me just underscore, we the people do not want another giant 2,572-page bill. When Washington says they have comprehensive legislation, comprehensive is their synonym for unread. We want specific small bills, 20 pages, so that members of Congress will actually read them before they're enacted. Not one big bill where they can put in a lot of dirty deals and backroom bargains. Whether it's 20 pages per bill or 200 pages for 10 bills, you know, there's a lot of things that need to get done. You still feel like that's feasible uh, once Congress comes back uh, in January. I do feel it's visible now that the president's going to try and veto some of those bills, but Democrats in Congress are going to join the majority to pass these bills, maybe even over a presidential veto, because Democrats are facing the public again in two years, and they're going to be very scared at a repeat of what just occurred. How many Democrats, how much Democratic support do you think there is for, for these bills right now? You mentioned that there are some who would sign on, but how much support do you think there is right now? There's going to be growing support, uh, particularly as we get closer to the 2016 election. Growing support for a Democratic, or Dem growing Democratic support, I should say, for some Republican measures aimed at pushing back against Obamacare. Betsy McCoy. Not just pushing back up against Obamacare, improving the situation for the American people. Re Republicans want kids to stay on their plans till they're, uh, want kids yes, to stay on their plans. Yes, I, I should say, yeah, you're right, plan. Betsy, improving or maybe replacing altogether Obamacare, but they do have some work to do. Betsy McCoy, thanks so much for being with us. We're back here on America's Forum after this. Dr. Peter Pry joins us to talk about 
our infrastructure and the danger we face from overseas.